Hey guys, it's Eve from Realm Pictures here, here to do another lighting tutorial on philipbloom.net. We had an amazing reaction to last week's lighting tutorial. Thank you all so much for your questions and your retweets and your emails. It was overwhelming but exciting at the same time, so thank you all so much for that. Phil has asked us to come back and do another two lighting tutorials, so we're going to do one this week and we're also going to try and do one next week between Christmas and New Year. Uh, but it's a really busy week for us next week. A lot of you know it's the last week of our Kickstarter campaign. So bear with us, we will do our best to bring you another tutorial next week. One of the biggest questions we got asked was what were the lights we were using, what was the make, the model? And it's a really important question, I know. But And I have tried to answer a lot of you uh, via Twitter and email. But what I really wanted people to get away from that was not what lights we were using, but more how we were applying them. It's great if you've got access to your HMIs, your Kina Flows, your big studio lights. But if you don't have access to that, to those sort of things, that doesn't mean that you can't make your shots look amazing using light. For example, the shot that you're looking at at the moment, today, is a shot that we've lit entirely by lights that we found just lying around our house. We've got work lights behind me, I'm being lit by an iPhone, a desk lamp, and in front of me providing our soft key light here with also our magical little eye light is actually a string of 200 Christmas fairy lights. But I'm not going to take you through how to position these today, where you're going to put them in order to light an interview or a blog like this. But what we're actually going to do, in the spirit of Christmas, we're going to go through and look at each individual light that we have here and tell you ways and show you examples of how we've used these lights, these exact lights, to light shots that we've filmed in the past 12 months and hopefully you guys can pick up on a few hints and maybe some tips as to how you can use them in your work. Okay so we're going to go through four ways in which you can use lighting that's probably just hanging around your house or at the very least is available to you from your local supermarket or hardware store that you can use to add a little bit of gloss, a little bit of spice to your shots. These are all things that we've used in the past that we still use today, so I really hope you guys can uh, get something out of this. The first type of light we're going to talk about is something that's readily available on film sets, I would say, and it's that of a smartphone. In particular, I'm talking about the iPhone, of course. Uh, on the iPhone, we have an app called Droid Light. Do we? No. Droid Light, there we go. And this basically turns your iPhone into a light switch so that you can turn your light on the back of your camera on and off. Get yourself a couple of C47s, also known as clothes pegs, and attach them together like this. And that basically just makes a little stand for your eye light so that you can then pop it onto any flat surface. You can then use this to uh, pop into your scene, hide in your scene, and use just to pick up a little bit of detail We've uh, used this in the past to backlight mugs of coffee so that you can really see the steam and things like that. And again, it just adds a little bit of depth to your shot. So that's the iPhone. I'm sure there are many other apps out there that you can use, but that's the one I'm talking about today. The second source of light I'm talking about today is Christmas lights. It's Christmas, so we have strung some up behind me. Um, I wouldn't usually recommend using them like this. They can look a little bit silly if you're not careful with them, but there are a couple of really creative things that you can do with Christmas lights. The first thing being, because Christmas lights are basically a really small point of light, when you're shooting at a really shallow depth of field and they're in the background of your shot, they create these beautiful discs of light and when they overlap, it makes this really, really lovely pattern. At the beginning of this video, we use this technique and it adds a bit of glamour to the shot, makes it maybe feel a bit like a cityscape. You could have people moving around in the background, maybe jiggling them a little bit, giving a bit of movement and interest in the background. So that's one way that you can use fairy lights in your shot. The second thing you can use fairy lights for is what we've got set up here in the background. We've actually pinned our fairy lights to a piece of 4x4 of poly board, um, effectively turning it into a large soft light, which is pretty useful in itself. But what we've actually done is, because it's polyball, we've actually managed to pop a hole right through the centre of it, um, allowing us to be able to put our camera through the middle and shooting a subject the other side. What this has effectively done is turn this into a ring light. Uh, for those of you that don't know, ring lights are often used in things like fashion photography. 
Uh, that is because ring lights create a really soft light that uh, gets rid of any shadows in the face, evens out all the lines, all the wrinkles, that sort of stuff, um, and makes the skin look really wonderful. Ring lights also create wonderful eye lights as well, and because these lights are all scattered across the board, it's made a really magical sort of dotty eye light there, which is wonderful. If you're shooting a music video, this sort of thing is especially useful. Pop a wide angle lens on your camera and pop it through that hole. Get your subject to come up really close and you're going to get really massive eyes with that really awesome eye light and a real stylized feel. So that's a couple of ways that you can use fairy lights to uh, add to your shots. The third light source we're going to talk about in the industry are known as cock lights. We like to refer to them as the Lego of lighting, and I'll show you why. These are basically just your standard light fittings with on off switches here, and male to female connectors that you can connect together. Whoop, wrong way around, Highly modular, hence why we call them the Lego of lighting. You don't have to have them this close together. You can get yourself some additional wire. This is the kind of wire that you'll find in the walls of your housing for your home electrical. So you can have them five, five meters apart, one meter, you can have two this close and then three at a different distance. They're extremely modular these. But the most wonderful thing about them is because they are just standard light fittings, you can go into your light shop, any shop that sells bulbs, you can have a wonderful time playing around with everything that's available to you. It's like being a kid in a candy shop. You can uh, pop in some 15 watt pygmies in here of all different colours. You can go for a 200 watt globe bulb or you can even pop in some candles. These give off some fantastic light. But the best use for these that we've found is, say you wanted to backlight a bookcase, for example. You wouldn't be able to just put a massive light behind there, it would probably blur it out and silhouette everything behind it. But with these, you could connect a whole load of them together and you can hide them within the bookcase, just giving a bit of separation and a bit more depth to your shop. So that is uh, cock lights, festoon lighting. We actually made these ourselves, so you can do it too. And the fourth and final light source that we're going to talk about are these bad boys. These are builders work lights. We picked these up from our local supermarket for £10. For that we got the stand and the two heads for it. But the most exciting thing about these lights is they take these bulbs here. And this bulb here is exactly the same bulb that goes in one of these. This is a film and video halogen light. This is the exact light that we were using last week as our key light for our interview setup. But the two main differences between these and the work lights are this. These are professional film video lights, they come with all the accessories, your barn doors, your soft box, and they come in a nice little bag with your stands and your kits all, all in one. Looks really professional in front of clients. The second most uh, important difference between these two is these are about 20 times more as expensive. So if you are on a budget, then just use these, they're fantastic. And if you want to mod them up, you can. Go online, go on eBay, find yourself uh, some second-hand barn doors from a theatre company that are getting rid of a load of lights, and weld them on, mod them up. You can uh, pop something like that on there to help control that spill. Mind your fingers though, because they do get really hot. The other thing you can do is you can make these dimmable. I've seen uh, some fantastic tutorials online of people who have uh, attached dimmers, dimmers to these things so that you can really control the light that's coming out of them. And finally, <laughs> in last week's tutorial, you know that we took this light source and because it was really hard we wanted to soften it up, we popped our softbox on. There's absolutely no reason why you can't do the same thing. Pop onto eBay. Get yourself one of these, a photographic reflector, usually silver and gold or silver and black on one side. You take that top bit off and you have one of these. This is the silk. Get yourself a clamp or a peg, gaffer tape, uh, onto a light stand, a pole, a chair, whatever you can find. And what you've done is you've scattered all that hard light and you've given yourself a really lovely soft light. Exactly the same that we were looking at in last week's tutorial. 
So there were some of our golden tips as to how you can go about using lights that are just hanging around your house in order to spice up some of those shots. In response to hundreds of requests this week, we have now added a brand new Kickstarter reward. For just $50, you can bag yourself an hour long lighting masterclass produced by myself and the team here at Realm. And it's gonna be available on DVD or for digital download. And we're gonna go into a lot more information about light. We're gonna look at light theory. We're gonna look at industry gear, how you go about telling the difference between HMI and Kina flows, as well as all the other stuff there. But most importantly, we're going to be looking at how you go about deciding how you're going to light your scene. We're going to go from script all the way through to preparing a lighting plan, right the way through to the execution of the final product. And hopefully you guys are going to get a lot of information out of this so that you can go out and make your movies look kick-ass with some amazing lighting. This is a really unique opportunity for Kickstarter donators. If you are donating to the project, get in touch via Twitter or via email or on the Kickstarter page and let us know what you want to see on that DVD. The most popular topic, topics that come through to us we will feature on that masterclass. On top of that we are also now offering four of our $50 reward packages for $125 instead of the $200. So if you haven't donated already there's, you're going to get yourself an amazing bargain. You're going to get four of those reward packages for $125. If you've already donated, then maybe you feel like upgrading because there's a lot of information you're going to get there. If we don't get to our $60,000 mark, we are not going to get any of the money and no one will get any of the rewards we're offering. So please keep donating and keep spreading the word for us. I really look forward to bringing you another tutorial next week. Thanks again, Phil, for allowing us to come back and share a bit more information. And in the meantime, I hope you all have an amazing Christmas.